Hi, this is Teacher Lise. This is part one of the lesson on elements and compounds. In grade school science, you've learned that matter is anything that occupies a space and has mass. The sun and water are both examples of matter. The sun is a huge ball of gas, while water is liquid at room temperature. But do you know that the sun and water have another thing in common? They both contain hydrogen, the lightest and most abundant element in the universe. The hydrogen in the water that you are drinking right now is the same hydrogen that makes up about 90% of the sun. You might be asking, if both have hydrogen, then why are they entirely different? I mean, the sun is glowing, but the water is evidently not. It sounds a bit of a silly question, but sometimes it's the silly things that make science even more exciting. So let's answer this question by spelling out the difference between elements and compounds. An element is the simplest form of matter that consists of a single type of atom. By simplest, we mean it cannot be broken down into simpler forms without losing its properties. When two atoms of the same element combine, they form a molecule. When two or more atoms of different elements combine, they form a compound. Let's take the case of water. Water is a compound consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. How on earth is water, a liquid, be composed of two elements that are gases? Now that we're in doubt, it's time for an experiment. If water is really composed of gases, do you think it is possible to separate the component elements? Let's find out. Let's break water down into its component elements to see if it is really composed of hydrogen and oxygen. To do this, we need to add energy, using electricity, to break water into its component elements. This process is called electrolysis. It came from the words electro, which means energy and electricity, and lysis, which means breaking or splitting up. This is our improvised electrolysis apparatus. I built it using a milky plastic cup, some wires, screws, syringe and a 9 volt battery which is where the electricity will be coming from. We will also be using distilled water so that it is stripped off of all the impurities and other minerals. But since water is a poor conductor of electricity, we are going to add table salt which will act as an electrolyte and allow the transfer of energy through water. So as you can see, the gas bubbles in the right syringe are bubbles of hydrogen and chlorine gas. What exactly happened? Let us use these balls to represent the atoms involved in the experiment. There are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in each water molecule. When table salt was dissolved in water, we introduced sodium and chlorine ions in the solution, which increases its conductivity by allowing electricity to flow easily through it. When energy in the form of electricity is added, it breaks the bonds that hold water molecules together. Now we got all the ions or charged atoms free to move and bond with each other. Sodium ions bond with oxygen and hydrogen. This makes chlorine atoms and extra hydrogen atoms bond with their own kind and form chlorine and hydrogen molecules and leave the solution as gas. These are the gas bubbles we see in the right syringe. Although we did not observe oxygen as gas, we did see hydrogen and chlorine gases in the form of bubbles. Our experiment shows that water is indeed composed of two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. This experiment clearly shows that a compound, in this case water, has properties that are distinctly different from its component elements. In short, when elements combine to form a compound, a new different 
substance is formed. This answers our previous question about the sun and water, that although both have hydrogen as their component element, the resulting compounds have entirely different properties. This is why we can drink water that has hydrogen in it, but we cannot do the same with the sun. That ends our lesson for today. See you in our next video.